Test me, O God, and know my thoughts. See that my path is not wicked, and lead me in the way everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, to serve you is to reign. Grant that, with the help of St. Casimir's intercession, we may constantly serve you in holiness and justice. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. More torturous than all else is the human heart, beyond remedy. Who can understand it? I, the Lord alone, probe the mind and test the heart to reward everyone according to his ways, according to the merit of his deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose late leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that, they may, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> if they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel. This portion of our Lord's parable teaches us that being a privileged recipient of a message from heaven guarantees neither the character, holiness, nor even the salvation of the recipient. From his lofty position, Abraham declares that even a miraculous warning from the deceased Lazarus would leave the rich man's brothers unmoved. If they paid no heed to the official public revelations of Moses and the prophets, they would also ignore or abuse any private revelations. We see this also in the apparition of the hand of God, which appeared and wrote King Belteshar's death sentence on the wall of his Paris, palace in the book of Daniel one of several examples where individuals received a personal warning from heaven only to allow the dire consequences to follow. Recently, especially after our last election, one can notice a definite increase of the faithful citing end time prophecies from scripture, the saints, and others claiming a correspondence to our present times. I've also noticed an increase of requests to bless supplies of water, salt, candles, and even weapons, believed to provide protection from anticipated chastisements. Whether such preparations are justified or not, I don't really know. But I know that similar reactions have occurred whenever a secular authority seems poised to persecute the faith. There's nothing wrong with preparing for the worst. The issue, rather, is the sin of pride, which often accompanies it. 
St. John of the Cross in the 16th century gave the advice to ignore all private revelations because we are so easily fooled by the devil and encouraged by pride. Also, even in the case of an authentic message from heaven, it cannot contain anything new or essential for our salvation anyway, since our faith teaches that the fullness of revelation is already contained in the scripture and traditions preserved by the church. Private revelations are given merely as an aid for a particular time or a people and must always agree with public revelation. But one should examine their conscience regarding their motives for acting on any private revelation or their popular interpretations, even those considered genuine. Especially prophecies of chastisements, it's easy to allow our pride to swell when people seek us out and pay and pay heed to the alarming information that we are sharing. Not unlike the early Gnostic heretics who believed that they were saved principally through the hidden knowledge gained by their own research. In our first reading, Jeremiah says, cursed is the man who trusts in human beings. And that curse certainly applies to those believing that they are one of the very few who have the inside scoop on salvation because they read their monthly Armageddon magazine. Abraham's words from the parable apply to these as well because such knowledge, even if authentic, does them little good because they make an idol out of it while foregoing the scriptures and tradition of the church. Although not as thrilling or satisfying as a prophecy of doom, the church's teachings are nevertheless inspired by the Holy Spirit and under his protection, which guarantee that they are absolutely relevant to our salvation, whereas private revelations have no such guarantee. And even if most of us are not readily tempted by the lure of secret knowledge, there are other things that can cause the same sin of pride in us with similar consequences. For instance, membership in an exclusive club, gaining a rare achievement, having a sense of superior refinement, and a familiarity with someone famous just to name a few. Let us pray that we be ever docile and faithful to the teachings of the church and not be led astray through curiosity, the workings of pride, and trusting in men rather than in God, that the prophet's words could apply to us as well. Blessed be the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. With confidence in the Lord's generosity, let us bring to him our petitions. That the Lord may look graciously upon all members of the church as we proclaim the good news, let us pray to the Lord. That the gospel message of peace and blessing may direct the actions of world leaders, let us pray to the Lord that the homeless and destitute may find relief through God's provision and Christian generosity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that members of our parish may continue to be strengthened and transformed by the grace in the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the faithful departed may rest forever in the loving arms of God especially for Mary Kay Tran, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty Father, giver of every perfect gift, 
Grant these, our prayers, according to your most holy will, and through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. By this present sacrifice, we pray, O Lord, sanctify our observance, that what Lenten discipline outwardly declares, it may inwardly bring about, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, 
especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, open your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, 
Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord.
Let us pray. May this sacrifice, O God, remain active in its effects and work ever more strongly within us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.